All right. Okay, that's all right. I need to adjust that. Let's see. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. What's going on, Instagram? What's going on, YouTube? Just wanted to get on a quick live. Happy New Year's. I don't, I don't think I've been on IG Live in a while, but YouTube, you guys, I got a new grill. I got this off Amazon. If, if you guys have been following along, you might know that basically um, the Live Art Grill is an electric grill that I started out using. I learned a lot on it and I love pushing that. Except, Yaki again, you guys have bought out pretty much all the Live Art Grills and we've been looking for alternatives. I went on Amazon, I did a YouTube live maybe, uh, maybe a month and a half ago where basically we scrolled through the Amazon list to just see uh, what kind of electric grills might work out as a live art alternative and all sorts of price ranges we saw but this one I found for uh, it was maybe about $30 and I think maybe just a handful of Yucky Van have bought this as as a possible alternative so I haven't opened it up yet so I want to do this unboxing but I also you know I want to test on it, I want to grill on it so I figured I will go ahead and make some skewers live so you guys have any questions on breaking down chickens and whatnot we can do that here because i'm here i know a lot of times i get messages on a lot of these questions but it's a lot easier for me to answer these live so let's go ahead i guess i can't really do this yet move this over here Um, I might miss some questions. Uh, just keep on asking them away. Uh, where do you buy? Where did I find my steel bars that go across my grill? That one uh, depends. If it's my Yak grill, you can get it on the Yak grill website. If it's on my Bincho grill, it's on the Bincho grill website as equipment. Oh man, so many questions coming in. I hope I can get to all this stuff. Once my coals are a little upgraded, I keep struggling to keep the heat going on the coals. What can I do to keep help maintain the heat? I uh, just gotta keep on cooking on it. I mean, basically, as a fast drip, it gets hotter as you fan on it. Just keep on using it. But it might be simply that you guys are out and you know it's winter right now. It gets very cold. That cools down the temperature. It's really hard to keep uh, basically your charcoal grill going if it's really cold outside. So keep that in mind. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up, and then we'll get the chicken cutting. Here we go. As I said, yeah, I got this on Amazon. I had this sitting for maybe like two, three weeks, but definitely wanted to open this up, try it out. I know my return period on this is like next week, so hopefully this works. Um, and yeah, this was technically essentially funded by you guys, especially those who uh, purchase things on my Amazon shop. Uh, you, the links in the bio and all that, yakitori, uh, Amazon.com slash shop that you actually got every time you guys buy stuff on there basically you know i get like one to three percent kickback so if you were to buy like a chicken cutting knife on there like a, you know if it's like eighty dollars i get like eighty cents or something like that but all of that adds up where i have credits on my amazon so i can purchase things like this and test it out for you guys and if it's great i recommend it and if it's not you guys didn't have to spend your money on it because i tested it all right let's see yeah, I'm kind of going back and forth between Instagram and YouTube, trying to look at the questions. Trying to multitask here. I even got soup going on right here. This is some chicken bone soup. Not much in the packaging. Ooh, <laughs> little surprise gift of these uh, silicone brushes. Kind of flimsy brushes, but I guess it's nice to have as sort of a bonus item. That's it in the boxes. All right, so it looks like it comes with the grate. Now, I definitely prefer grates that are thin, so this is good. Uh, the Live Art one definitely has even a thinner grill. And the thinner, the better, because that leaves less char marks on your on your skewer because the, the char is it's just going to add bitterness and whatnot so but this is fine it's not really thick or anything like that all right 
And the main reason why I got this grill, you know, as a live bar alternative, but the main reason why, you know, I suggest people get like a live art style grill versus, um, let's see, like, like Zoljirushi, they make uh, electric grill. Like there's a lot of things that are tied to electric grills, but those are all, most of them are usually just hot plates. They're just like a frying pan, you know, like a skillet that's just heated up from the bottom with the coil. That won't work for yakitori. That, that would just be like basically grilling your chicken on top of your, um, you know, your, your frying pan. So you need something where you have the heating element, whether it's these coils or charcoal, and then you have basically radiative heat. So in this case, this is gonna glow orange, you got radiated heat, charcoal glowing orange, radiated heat, and you got the skewers, the meat, the proteins on top, and the, radi the infrared is basically gonna cook the proteins, like the meats, basically from the inside out. So you got sort of like crispy skin outside, but very juicy on the inside. Uh, if you were to do it on one of those electric grills that are just essentially just uh, the, the pans, the griddles, that's con uh, basically uh, conductive heat. So it just kind of cooks from the outside in. So you get basically, you know, you might have chicken that's gonna be pink on the inside, but all dry on the outside. So that's why you want something like this. So, so far, got all the easy components here. Got, looks like the water tray. Pretty straightforward. Ah, so this is something different. Um, you know, with the live art, we have basically just an on and off switch. This has a dial. Now, let's see how much this is really going to make a difference, you know, between the minimum and the max. But that's good. Because sometimes you, you want to be able to adjust the, the temperature. So we have that. I'm going to do a quick rinse of this. And for anyone just tuning in, just doing an unboxing right here of this boo heck grill that i got off amazon as basically an alternative to the live art grill and also going to be making breaking down the chicken and make some skewers so we can go ahead and test this out cool 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 so yeah see a lot of you guys are joining in and i'm trying my best to catch any questions you guys have but i might miss them because there's two screens it's very small what's up rob chowder Yucky Gang London, thanks for tuning in. Okay, got the cord here. I'm still here, guys. Just grabbing an extension cord. Does anyone have this grill? And I think um, the last time I, I went on live, there's a Kim's convenience store that still has the live arts, but as of a few weeks ago, someone informed me that they are all out. So I think officially, uh, in the U.S. We're out of the live art grills. All right, plugged it in. Ah, so there is one fault I already found, which is this drip tray, which normally you put in water. The live art one just slides out. This one, you have to basically take everything apart including these coils that might be hot. I'm trying to figure out what would be the safest way to do this. If you needed to reload it with more water. Uh, that's hard. <laughs> but you can't really beg because this is only one of the few alternatives out there. All right, so let's see. Cool. All right. So there's a dial here. There's a light that comes on. Let's see if I can show it to YouTubers. All right. So yeah, this light comes on when you switch it on. A per so it starts at minimum. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Maybe there's halfway and it clicks on. Since we're making yakitori and I'm going to assume this is way too cold. I'm just going to crank this all the way up to max and just see how hot this gets. In the meantime, maybe I can start 
breaking down to all right do you have any tips or recipes for fish on yakitori uh couldn't see all the questions but the question was something along the lines of like fish on yakitori fish is pretty recipe wise i want to say there's not much to do with fish because you're not it's um you know you're not really breaking down the fish it's usually you want to cook your whole unless it's like a bigger fish uh i think there's sort of techniques that maybe we can discuss and share of how to let's say maintain um you know like say crispy skin but have it really steamy and juicy on the inside so but that I want to say, look, that's like a whole nother genre of grilling, cooking, like yakizakana. Uh, if you go to a yakitori restaurant, it's usually strictly just going to be just the chicken, the different cuts of the chicken, the course of the chicken. So I can, you know, I have some insights on, like, I like to grill a bunch of different stuff. I definitely, you know, might share some of those insights in some future videos if I do. Maybe, you know, if I join up with uh, outdoor chef like talk to again and we do some like maybe like catch and grill sort of videos um he might have some insights and i might have some insights that i can provide but in terms of like a full in-depth knowledge of as a expert on uh grilling fish there's not really that i can much i can share right now um as i said that's like a different sort of vertical and i'm really into um kind of the activity stuff. but yeah various techniques from here I can apply it to you know other cuts, pork, beef, and, and fish as well. But not everything translates. All right, so this is it's heating up. Um, I'm, I'm getting some toxic fumes from here. This is pretty much the nature of anything straight out of a, a factory. Uh, we're probably just burning off all those chemicals on there. But let's see. So right here, Instagram, YouTube, you guys can both see this. Let's go ahead and break down this chicken, because. Yeah, I can't really, you know, I want to grill stuff on it. So, let's just say, yeah, I'm just going to keep this sort of heated to uh, burn off any of this chemicals on here. Oh, quick question. I missed it. <laughs> Darn it. Hopefully. Cooking squirrels, I have not done yet, and I'm hoping that you're just uh, joking, trolling there. Uh, I don't know. I I actually really love squirrels. Uh, for those of you guys who've been following for maybe a few years, you guys know about my parents. Uh, recently passed away with Chibi. We had a flying North American flying squirrel. So. Not too sure about uh, you guys grilling squirrel right there. <laughs> All right, but here we go. We got the chicken. I just got this sort of going. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Actually, so the light turned off on this grill. It's still on max, but the light turned off. I wonder if it's still hot. So hopefully it's still going. Maybe it's just like a safety thing on and off. Chicken of the trees, oh man, <laughs> get that out of here. Uh, okay, so this is um, a smaller chicken than usual. I, uh, I just actually today finished filming a video on pasture bird. So this is a pasture bird chicken. And so pasture bird is a, a local farm out of Marietta, California. They basically, um, Hina Yakitori in San Francisco, they use pasture farms. So Chef Tame Hina told me about pasture bird and connected me with this company. And uh, they uh, they were nice enough to send me a few chickens to try out. So today I just made a video. And this is the one extra chicken I have. This is a smaller one, but I wanted to definitely make some yakitori. Uh, I talked about this in my video, but it is unfortunate. This one did not come with the tail here. This is a bonjiri, which is really, uh, you know, fatty really delicious part right here so it did not come with that all right but cool all right let's go ahead and uh you know normally if you guys have been following along my chicken breakdown videos and if you haven't seen that go watch that you know that my first step is taking out the tail they've already done that here so we don't need that we're gonna get these legs with chicken breakdown it's really about we're using the knife to just cut through all the soft parts so in this case it's just the skin and any membranes 
any other cartilage holding together. We're not cutting through any bones. It's cutting off the skins that hold things together. Oh, unfortunately, this one, the leg is already broken. Okay. Yeah, if I miss some questions, just, uh, and they're very important, just make sure to ask them away. All right, so right here, very small. This is a three pound, three pound chicken, but I'm still able to do this. Any smaller, and it's gonna, it does get a little bit harder. But I did do a video you guys may have seen on, I did a quail, quail yakitori. That was the tiniest ever. And then I also did the big opposite of that, which is the turkey yakitori. So. All right, so two legs, got the oysters intact. Next step, got the butt skin, butt skin. This is good fat, so this can become chiu, so good. And uh, you can fry things in it or rub it on your grill to basically season. Okay, it's going. Is this turn off? I can't tell if it's... We may have broken it. We'll see. <laughs> Is it a breaker? <laughs> the lights are on, right? Yeah, lights are on. Yeah. So, we're inside. Not a commercial kitchen here. It is a garage space. But like we don't got anything taking up that much power. Yeah, it's I don't think it's on anymore. I may have broken the grill or the grill may have broken on me before we tried. Good thing I tried it out today because uh Amazon's return policy I have maybe five more days for it. So if it's not working I'm gonna have to get it replaced. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh I didn't explain, but basically that was the belly, belly meat, belly skin, and I took off all the breast skin. Now we're gonna go for the breast meat. Go across the wishbone, down. There we go, breast. The other side. other side yeah if you guys are just tuning in basically I got a new electric grill here just wanted to test it out so let's bring another chicken so I got some skewers did I kick the plug out no nope, did not kick anything still plugged in so should be working my friend here Brian he's he's gonna assist me yeah Turn it off. All right, but yeah, that's little tiny chicken tenders because this is a three pound chicken. Very tiny there. Another tiny chicken tenders. Huh, <laughs> not turning on. <laughs> And this has power coming through, right? Pretty much. Like. Yeah. Alright, that's it guys. No more video. This grill is not working. I just opened it today. That's it. No video. I'm just kidding. I'll keep on uh I got my other grill, Pinchotan grill going outside. Um maybe you can see on Instagram. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grill out there. But oh man. That was I was hoping this was gonna work. Uh, as a, another alternative. Wait, there's a safety switch. All right, I just missed that. Someone said there's a safety switch. All right. Wait, 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 wait. All right, whoever on YouTube said there's a, you will hear a click when it's when it is down correctly. I mean, I hear the click as it goes on and off, but then that light is not turning on. Like I hear it click, and when it clicked, the light turned on earlier. And you know, sometimes 
earlier, even that when I had it on this max mode, the light. <laughs> we'll see. It may or may not work. Okay, cool. Still, so, I got this chicken. I'm gonna grill. But yeah, for anyone joining in, basically, I was trying to do an unboxing and testing out this new grill. I just got it on Amazon maybe two, three weeks ago. Wanted to show it as an alternative because I think not everyone wants to go and get a, you know, a charcoal grill right off the bat. And I actually don't rec I recommend everyone to start with an electric grill if you're going to buy a new grill. Uh, it's just a lot easier to get into Yakitori. You can do it anywhere very conveniently. It's also affordable, so I always recommend electric. Um, but, and then this was one of the... <laughs> yeah. So the, the, we just put in a fan. So the plug is working. I think just, just something with this grill. Um, you know, right off the bat. It, did work, and now yeah, I can hear the clicking, but and it, it got hot for a second. The light was on, got hot, but I I don't know, it's not working. I will contact this company and <laughs> yeah, sorry, Kevin. For if you bought this, hopefully yours work actually. Maybe mine is just a fluke. All right, so I got all the different parts here. Oh, cartilage. But other than that, this will go into my suit pile. And lastly, we have just the neck. Yeah, sorry guys. I see your sort of kind of questions coming in sometimes. Um, I can see it, but some, on, on YouTube, it, it just pops up as a bubble and goes away. At least on Instagram, it's like a scroll, so I have some time to look at it. Uh, people are suggesting I should just do it the Russian way and hit this with a hammer. Mm. Oh! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. So, <laughs> after hitting it... It worked. <laughs> um, so, uh, if it doesn't work, just hit it a few times. It might work. Uh, I was able to read that question on YouTube. If I'm using gyuta, if I'm making beef tongue, yak, uh, kushi, yaki, skewer, do I use the same tare? So yeah, you can use the same tare in terms of you can use that tare for all your other grilling. I just only dip my chicken skewers into my tare pot be and, or the negima because my tare only consists of chicken flavors and then the negi, the onion flavors. I don't want to contaminate it with beef fats, pork fats, uh, you know, seafood like squid or, or fish flavors into it. So if you're going to do beef tongue or anything else basically besides chicken, my recommendation is just Scoop out some of that tare, put it on the side, and, and brush it on. And don't put it back in. Just use up all that tare, or keep it on the side for all the other stuff. Like, I have basically a separate tare uh, that I've kept for uh, brushing it onto all my seafood stuff. And I use the same tare to brush onto my yaki onigiri grill rice ball. But yeah, so yeah, I'm able to catch some questions as it goes by if I'm looking up, but I can't catch all of it. But hopefully it's still good information. And the grill is working, guys, so... Just have to bang it. Alright, so lastly, just wanted to take off this neck. So, all the chicken, chicken parts are here. Uh, can you guys see? You guys can see this is right here. So this is going into my little soup pot right here. I get this, I'm getting this question multiple times. What is my favorite yakitori restaurant in LA? I will say my pop-ups. So sign up. It's in the bio uh, on YouTube. You might have to go to Instagram. Uh, look at the descriptions in my bio. Sign up for my LA pop-ups. Uh, kind of pause it because it's starting getting cold, winter break and all that, but we're going to start doing those again. Sign up for those. Um, I say that because 
I just like the yakitori I make where it's all the various parts sort of done coarse style. Um, this is the kind of yakitori I learned in, uh, in, in Japan and I, I, in, in New York there's places like this that do this. Uh, in LA we don't really have too much, I, everywhere in LA so far is just uh, you know, or order as you go, they do a variety of skewers, so um, they're not that specialized in making each of those bites stand out. They're, they're fun, good yakitori places, but uh, I really like sort of when like a chef is really, you know, really hyper-focused on making the best out of like the oyster, making the best out of the skin, all that. We don't really have that here in, in LA. Um, in New York though, uh, you know, some of you guys probably know some of these names like Tori Shin, Tori Yen, uh, and Chef Kono, he's gonna uh, open up Yakitori Kono soon, so that's exciting. In March, that's gonna open, and I've learned a lot from his sort of original videos. Um, we've kept in touch. I got to cook with them one time. That was a video I posted. Um, on, on my Instagram where basically I got to make some skewers with them all day long. His uh, assistant was out sick on the day that I went to go visit him. I thought I was just going to just see some things, but then he asked if uh, I could help out in the kitchen. Luckily I had uh, my chicken knife and my apron on me. This was, I think I got there around noon, from noon to five, got to uh, break down chickens with them. Um, he showed me one example, I had to break that down and then I scared everything and then later on that night I went to go eat and uh, it, was, it was fun to know that like I got to, you know, someone who I, I looked up to as a yakitori chef in America we got to work together and hopefully uh, Chef Kono, uh, we, you know, if you guys are watch, if you're watching, uh, we're gonna do some more events when your restaurant opens up so anyone in New York, hopefully we get to do some stuff out there but yeah, um, in the meantime though I am, you know, going back to LA, I do want to um, you know, explore a little bit more of LA, even though they're not my preference of style of the yakitori. I do want to uh, go to some places. I, I did go like two months ago to Torigoya in downtown LA. It was, I had a, I had a good time there. Basically, they are importing bincho down from Japan. The supplies are limited, so they're actually every week getting shipped bincho down just so they can maintain that good yakitori there. Um, and everything that I ate there, uh, it, it was good. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't like the special sort of cuts that I was looking for. But of all the different places, up, you know, to if you just do want to try yakitori to get a, an idea of what good yakitori can be, definitely I recommend checking out Torigoya. And I do want to check out some other places as well. Uh, I grew up going to Shinsengumi in Gardena, Torrance area. Uh, they do more variety, sort of kushiaki style. I like the atmosphere there. But there are other places, uh, names in LA, like Torimatsu. Uh, yakitoriya in Salt Hill area. I actually grew up going there, but this is before I really got into yakitori. So, um, you know, I can't really. So maybe the last time I went was like hmm, six, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. So uh, I can't tell you how it is now. Now that I know a lot more about yakitori, but I do want to, as think, um, this year, make an effort to go try out all these different places to be able to give you more insight on, you know, what's good to try there. Uh, and hopefully not just LA, but can explore um, outside as well. Including San Francisco, I do have an upcoming video, got to work with Chef Tommy at Hina. Um, so we made some yakitori together. Um, it was really fun. So I'm currently uh, editing that video right now. So hopefully that comes out very soon. But yeah, here in the meantime, grill's going. Let's make some skewers. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I want to say this is a little bit trickier because everything is smaller on this three pound. I'm usually used to using about four to four and a half pounds. So I'm just taking out the, these are the, the tendons of the chicken tenders. All these steps here, they're in my tutorial videos, but hopefully it's kind of Maybe different to see it live. Non-edited. But yeah, thank you guys for joining. Just wanted to go on live and um, do this unboxing, testing out of this new grill. And then I also wanted to just answer any questions that I can live. 
is much easier. Yeah, got the chicken tenders. Very small tenders. I keep on missing the YouTube questions. Maybe someone should just <laughs> rewrite the YouTube questions on this Instagram feed and then I'd be able to see it. Alright, chicken tenders. Oh! Any plan for pop up in LA soon? Yep, in the works. Sign up. Uh, if you go on to. If you go to my Instagram and go into my, um, my links in bio, you'll be able to see, like I have a sign up form there for LA pop-up, so make sure to sign up there. This is the sort of thigh, lower thigh, sort of butt area, cartilage area, shoulder. Neck. Petty versus Honeski Go. Um, they're, they're two different types of knives for two different purposes. To uh, break down a chicken, you're going to need something robust, strong. That's where the Honeski, Garaski, or even a Deba is going to come in. Or even a, like a Gyuto, just a, you know, a, a, just a chef knife. And in the petty, it's much more smaller, so it's it's lighter, so you're not gonna get as tired. So best for all the intricate work. So maybe you know if I broke down a chicken with this, I can switch over to petty for some of the intricate work. But right now, for the sake of time, um, and off, oftentimes in the kitchen, I'm just using just one knife for it all. Right here, got some butt area, shoulder area, neck. Ooh, I, I missed some question. Something about boiling. Maybe that was a question about skin. So we got wing. Do you heat your tada before dipping your skewers or cold? Okay. All right. So if it's cold out of the fridge. You won't be able to dip into it because it's probably going to be really thick. So you have to at least bring it to room temperature. Um, if the question is about like, do you reheat your tare? Yes, you. Um, I have a few videos on that. Just check up like, uh, like top five yakigan questions, and then. Um, but yeah, you, the tare, it's it, it it will theoretically hold because it's basically you know you got the alcohol. The sugar and the salt content that should hold it but it really depends on how you use it if you're kind of using it dirty where as you're dipping it you're dropping things into it you know that can start turning into something uh, so i recommend like if you have the time basically just reheat your tare uh, every time you can before let's say if you haven't used it for a few weeks just uh, reheat it don't boil it because then you're going to burn the sugars in there and that your tare is going to turn very bitter but yeah just just reheat it every once in a while and that's what you know it's standard practice uh, for example at the shop in japan i was talking to my master and i guess yeah if you don't heat it up maybe once every like once a month or something you might see like a little bubble pop up like boop and i guess that's just uh, you know, some sort of fermentation going on in there. All right, so we got wings right here. What do restaurants do with the used skewers we use them? Okay, so restaurants, yeah, a few different things. So if you have skewers after you eat them, uh, let's see, I'll start with the ones like that are like me. Uh, I throw up, I throw them away. I, Yaktori Moe West, you know, Yaktori Baka, he throws them out away. The theory behind that would be uh, we want to make sure to give our customers, guests, you know, fresh, new, brand new, clean skewers. Now, if you want to reuse them, sometimes, you know, I might keep them around. They use skewers can work well as a fire starter, so definitely you have to use, you know, for that. 
And then, then some shops actually will wash, wash them and reuse them a few times with the theory that if it's uh, a used gear, sometimes as you're cooking it, tips as they burn, they can carbonize and get really hard. So it might actually be easier to skewer with that. So sort of two school thoughts. Some people just want to keep it clean. Um, and then others, you know, might want to reuse skewers. I personally just want to keep it clean to, you know, just be able to start with a fresh new skewer and for me skewering purpose, but also when people are eating it, I just, you know, I just want to give them something nice and clean. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I got legs. leg looks like it was busted from the package. Knee cartilage skewer. So yeah, I have basically knee cartilage right here that I kept on this eyepiece. This is how I do. So some people, there's different ways and I think um, Chef uh, Tommy's uh, Hina SF video that I'm about to do where we basically, we it's me and him side by side, uh, cutting chicken and grilling, uh, skewering and grilling. From one whole chicken, I think we were like at least 50% different. So uh, this is my knee cartilage right here. There's knee cartilage here, there's some meat here. And this is sort of the fatty part of the thigh. I'm gonna take onion, skewer, through sort of the knee cartilage area, skewer it through the onion, roll it, and this is a one bite a knee cartilage lollipop skewer. So we have that, and then this is the piece of thigh. Ooh, it was multitasking so hard that I cut through the oyster and put a part of the knee cartilage. I'll do it on the second one. Yep. Thigh, thigh inner thigh. So we have two of these thighs. Negi, Negi. Uh, I keep on missing the YouTube questions. It goes so fast. Negi, thigh with skin. Roll it. Negi, thigh with skin. Roll it. Then trim off any excess side pieces. Negima. So yeah, anyone just tuning in right now, I did this sort of unboxing of this electric grill that I found on Amazon. And I got a chicken here, pasture bird chicken. I just finished filming this video, having a hard time taking this leg off because it came broken. So now I have a bottom joint here that I got to sort of surgically go around, remove. But yeah, here we go, sit pile. Ooh, someone planted 50 Tokyo Negi plant from seed. Yeah, Tokyo Negi. So, if you notice, these are the Negis that I'm using. Really thick, you need these thick cuts to make really juicy yakitori. Yeah, so that was right here. Cut off this inner thigh area. This is the oyster. Everything's so it's smaller on this three pounder. And I think some of the Yaki gang, you guys are like answering each other's questions, which I think is great because I'm definitely missing out on questions here. As long as it's a useful, useful information and you guys are sharing the false uh, answers. Hopefully they're good answers. But what I like about yakitori is 
is a new cartridge live bot is definitely you know chicken is relatively speaking like this whole chicken it's like 10 to 20 dollars for a whole chicken that can feed two people it's much cheaper than you know fish or sashimi wagyu uni all those other very tasty but pricier things that you might be afraid to experiment with yakitori you can try out different things see what you like uh, especially if you go with electric you can't really it's really hard to mess it up if you if you've never done yakitori and try to go on charcoal grilling the first time i guarantee uh you're gonna mess it up it's gonna become burnt um, you're going to be fighting flare-ups and stuff, and it gets actually pretty frustrating. Which is why I really believe that starting out electric, it's it's encouraging. Because even on your first time yeah. around, you can make decent yakitori. I think, you know, you just have to have fun with it. If you have fun with it, you're going to try it again. If it's frustrating, you might give up on it. And that, that'll suck if you guys are starting out yakitori, negima, negima, and you just stop because your first time on it. Making yakitori is frustrating. Okay, so normally I do a tail, inner thigh, oyster skewer. This did not come with a tail, but I still have an oyster. I got two inner thighs, so let's just make some delicious inner thigh, inner thigh, and oyster. So yeah, always, if you can see, um, Pushing into the cutting board, you just always want to is this skewer into the cutting board. You don't skewer midair. If you skewer midair, your skewer can go all over the place, and every skewer is not gonna feel or look right. So use the cutting board as a guide. Yeah, I got this grill. This is the Boo Boo Heck grill right here. This is on Amazon. It was about $30. I've seen actually another model that looks exactly like this with different brand names. Like they probably just come from the same factory and you know companies are just adding different names on it. Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna turn this off. But earlier this this broke um, and then we were trying very hard to turn it back on and we couldn't get it going. But uh Yucky Gang suggestion, just whack it. And that that worked. So I think it's working. But yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and just um, finish making these skewers. What else? I mean, drumsticks are drumsticks. Breast is breast. Uh, oh, might as well make some skin skewers. And then yeah, let's get let's get on to grilling. So this was back skin, butt skin, I have some belly skin, belly meat, belly skin, belly meat. I'm just going to make a combination skin skewer. Go with the butt skin first, another layer of butt skin, going sort of weaving in and out. The idea of this is we have Basically, it's a packed skin skewer. You get a crispy on the outside. Chewy and meaty on the inside. Combination. Okay. Do you prefer breast skin to thigh and leg skin? Um, so, I, I don't... I haven't really eaten the thigh part of the skin on its own probably for the past three years or something because they're always used for the thigh same with like wing the only skin i have left over is just uh you know like this breast skin so it's really hard to say what i prefer um the reason why i do this combination skin right here is so that there are differences like the butt skin is definitely fattier so that it's it's like juicier and then uh, certain other skins maybe crisps up thinner I will say though just on a anatomical level yeah the butt skin breast skin neck skin they're definitely fattier 
versus let's say the thigh or leg skin. These are very thin, like it's, there's no fats sort of in between. So this is gonna sort of not be as juicy uh, if I was to make a skin skewer out of it compared to let's say the breasts or the butt area. But yeah, this combination of the butt, the back, belly skins. Lastly, we have the breast skin right here. It's six o'clock. Grab a drink. So if anyone's drinking up there, woo! It's been a long day. Uh, was filming since this four hours ago and then now I'm doing this YouTube live okay so this is breast skin cutting them into one inch width going up and down sort of weaving pattern so this skin though it's been sitting out here you know as i was chatting with you guys for a while so it's kind of getting very soft and oily that's all the the, the fats sort of rendering out at room temperature out of the skin so this makes it very tricky if you guys are trying to skewer this at home it might be very tricky to skewer this uh, then so then my recommendation if that happens is put the skins keep it cold put it in the fridge or the freezer for a second just let it sort of harden up so then you can skewer this like this cool so skin skin skewer breast skin skewer and all of these parts for the purpose of this live i'm not going to make this in skewer there they grill up fine on my jotan grill outside uh like the chicken breast i'm just going to do a whole cool Okay. I can take some questions if something comes in real quick. Nothing? YouTube. What is that clear container called? This is a Canbro. It's, you know, basically it's, it's a food tray that you're going to see in sort of all commercial kitchen areas. Some are going to be, uh, you know, uh, I guess taller, right? A deeper, somewhere longer. It's a standard sizing they use at restaurants. Uh, if you think of like Subway, right? Or, uh, or like Chipotle, they all have uh, the lettuce, the meats, they're all in these sort of restaurant Canberra containers. Sometimes it's like maybe maybe this width, that's where all the meats are. This is a plastic one, but then they have like metal ones. They're all standard sizes though. Do you always grow at the max allowable temperature? Um, I think that's a good question in regards to like whether this electric grill, which has a minimum max temperature, or on a charcoal grill where you can load it up with a lot of charcoal and get it really hot. There's two schools of thoughts. Some shops like it really, really, really hot and get it sort of like uh, crispy, like almost searing the skin outside very hard and kind of letting that heat really penetrate in but leaving it sort of maybe like medium rare on the inside and then there's others where they like it lower temperature and i like to play around with with both of that i think it depends on the cuts sometimes you know you want it 
uh, sort of nicer and slower. And then other times you don't want that because then it might dry out the part. So it really depends. There's no like one answer uh, kind of, and then, but you, you can change that up by uh, the way, you know, the, depending on your chicken, what kind of chicken you're using, like, you know, what breed is it? Is it, is it fattier or is it leaner? Um, how did you skewer? Are they big skewers? Are they tiny skewers? Like all of that. There's no, there's like different ways to adjust based on the different chickens that you're using or the different grills you're using or the different charcoals or even if it's a charcoal grill, like how it's laid out, like some grills are going to be hotter in the center, some grills are hotter at the top and not so much at the bottom. So then you adjust your skewer so that it's bigger pieces and gets smaller as it tapers down at the end. So all of those are kind of different. But all right, go ahead and um, turn this grill on to max and see how this works. Feels a little bit cooler. Uh, but yeah, just um, if you're coming from a charcoal grill, I think when you first try an electric grill, you're, at least like a home electric grill like this, because a commercial Yaktori electric grill, they can get really hot too, like a home one, it might feel a little bit colder. So you have to lower your uh, grilling expectations on these grills for example like you're not gonna be able to take this like I haven't used it yet but I guarantee like you're not gonna be able to cook like a, a two inch t-bone steak on this that's not what this is meant for it's for doing things like yakiniki like corn barbecue thin cuts of meat or in this case yakitori so we'll see how this goes all right center it for YouTube and then Instagram people went outside and grabbed mainly my two sort of condiments I need, my sake spray and my salt. I don't really need much else. This uh, plate. So I'm gonna give it a minute until it reaches max temperature. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna drink beer and answer any questions that might come. Wednesday. Happy, happy Wednesday, y'all. Okay. It's getting warmer. I did lie. Tare is actually a condiment. Necessary. So yeah, tare, salt, and sake is basically all we need. Um, wasabi, mustard, mizukosho, ume, definitely adds to the fun, but not necessary. Black pepper, matcha salt, smoked salt. Use a kosher powder, squid ink salt, dried red pepper flakes, shimmy, Japanese pepper mix. All right, favorite beer with yakitori. I gotta say, it's actually Asahi. Um, this, I think any sort of Japanese lagers are really crisp, works well with, with yakitori, but Asahi in particular, I, I like. But I've been kind of trying to cut back on beer, yeah, just for you know all the carbs and stuff. But beer is good. Alternative, shout out to my friends. Shochu is always good. Like shochu on the rocks. In this case, Nanka on the rocks, really good. Or you can use this as a like a sort of a mixers. It'll be great. That's chuhai and chuhai. In terms of chuhai, you can get can chuhai. Yabai. Japanese style chuhai in cans. Um, if you guys know strong like chuhai, it's like a, you can get them in 7 Eleven and all sorts of flavors. Drink two cans of those, you'll be good in Japan. Okay, let's go ahead and there's a lot of surface area. Let's get this grilling. It's probably just gonna grow a bunch at once. Uh, 
I guess. Well, I actually don't want to grill at all because I have my charcoal grill going outside and I know that's going to taste better. So maybe just a few just to try. All right, let's see. Sake. So here we go. I don't hear a sizzle. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's going to be warm enough to get this going. Let's do some uh, negima. Gonna suck it the meat side, salt on the meat side, salt on the skin side. Let's get this going. I mean, I can hear a slight sizzle. Uh, oh, but I do have a hack. This is, you know, even from the live art days, where basically I think the combination at home, electric grill, uh, you know, it's, it's lower temperature, but it has an infrared heat, combined with the gas torch to give it sort of that, that charry taste. Usually that, that, that should do it, so let's hope that this works. Um, but yeah, this is a very slow, oh yeah, gotta be careful with the strong zero. It can, it can mess you up, you'll have a fun time in Japan. So another thing I suggest with these electric grills too is, even the yakitori, so for example, like my neat cartilage lollipop, this is how I do it, but you might want to make your cut smaller so that it doesn't need that much heat to cook. All right, this is the neck and shoulder. Now, one thing I do notice that this goes one, so there's sort of three coil, so it's five zones, heating zones. I think the live art only has maybe three so this is it's wider the coils are packed with tight but i think the wattage is really going to make the difference i i don't know the wattage maybe it's on the box um it says 1800 watts so i think the live art it might have been 1500 so maybe my wattage this might be actually um it has, might have more power yeah Okay, let's see. All right, so this is the first one. It's cooking. It's slow process, but it's cooking. Um, this is slower, but this is you know I'm not I'm not used to this because I haven't cooked on an electric grill in a while. Uh, but I you know I rec I actually recommend this sort of pace if you're just starting out because then you can really take your time and just look at it. And it's, it's not really drying it out. And if you're worried about drying out your skewers, this is the other little hack. Just keep it moist with some sake. Yeah, I mean, it's still... I, I know you guys really can't see, but at least the fat springering out of the meat, it's glistening and it's starting to turn like uh, kind of golden in color. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Basically grilling it with the infrared heat as the heat rises, which is completely different from, as I said, if I was to cook this in a pan, it's just going to dry out the surface and that's it. Right now we want it to basically just cook it evenly and that's what these grills, whether it's this electric grill or a charcoal grill will do. What's going on? Greetings. Tokyo, Yaki Gang, thank you for joining. Yeah, so yeah, anyone just tuning in, as I've just got this V Vuhek grill. Is there, this is minimum max. There is a logo on here, it has a Vuhek logo, not on this side. But yeah, this, the, the brand here is Vuhek. So, just got this on Amazon, testing it out. I always recommend, especially for the cost of these, this, I think this is like $30. If you want to get into yakitori, starting out the whole chicken and then starting out with like an electric grill is definitely the sort of best bang for buck to learn how to break down a chicken, learn how to skewer and then grill it. And it's going to still come out very tasty. This whole notion of like, oh, it's electric. It's going to taste like you cook something in a microwave. That's not the case as long as it, you grill it like this is going to and you can see the smoke so basically as the chicken fats 
drip onto the coils, it's creating the smoke. So this whole notion of like, oh, it's not going to be smoky, that's not true. If this had more coil surface area, which the commercial electric grills do, yeah, that gets very smoky, as smoky as a Bintotan grill can get, because it's basically smoke, whether it's from the Bintotan, because Bintotan does not naturally have any smoke, it's literally just the oils dripping onto the hot surface, creating the smoke, and I can smell it, it's the chicken fat smoke that makes yakitori good. Alright, it's going very slow, but it's going. And the colors are good. This is this is really good color for yakitori. I'm missing all the YouTube questions. Sometimes I get it. Where do you buy bean chotan in LA? It's pretty hard. Uh, you know, before you're able to get it from like restaurant distributors, like Japanese restaurant distributors, you, if you have any friends that work at Japanese restaurants, you can contact them and see if they can get it for you. But right now, as far as I know, the, the supplies are very limited. Um, luckily, I stocked up on boxes of bean chotan like earlier last year. I'm still working off of that, but I'm, I'm even for my pop-ups and whatnot, like I'm making sure I you know, keep track and rationalize a little bit because uh, you just don't know. And, and you can, you know, there's other ways to get it directly from Japan, but it can be very expensive. So it's definitely a way in, which is also why, at least if you're home and starting out, like don't spend all your money and resources on doing being chill if you're just starting out, like electric grills or whatever grill you already have at home. If you just have like a Weber grill at home um, and just want to start with like Kingsford charcoal, lump charcoal, by the way, that's I have a video on Lump Charcoal Kings for Charcoal. They don't make good yakitori, but it's at least a good way to practice all the other skill sets that will transfer on when you want to get to better charcoal. Um, you know, it's it's just not the ideal. It's, you might run into, it might become trickier for to make good yakitori or for me to make good yakitori. Uh, but it's still, you know, you're still being able to have the practice the movements of yakitori. Just the problem with Kingsford or if lump is because they have a lot of they're not as high in carbon content as Minjotan, they burn a lot, they create all that smoke so that your food will start kind of having a little bit more of that campfire smoke wood sort of taste that's not really yakitori flavors. Um, and you might do uh, more flare ups. Uh, but it's you know it's whatever you can get. So try it, try it with whatever you can get first. Okay. So Chicken, tenders here. Just opening it up. Definitely cooked all the way through. Nice and soft. See, I like to go, I know I said we're not gonna be doing condiments, but I like to go with some wasabi. So wasabi on chicken tender is very classic. Like sabi, wasabi yaki, that's what they call it, sabi yaki. Yep, chicken tenders on an electric grill. It's still nice and steamy. I'm just gonna assume the texture is gonna be nice. And yeah, this is the pasture bird chicken on this electric grill. It's actually good. It's really good. Um, this I think this temperature is actually ideal. You know, to make nice soft chicken tenders. And because I, you know, I'm not, I don't have all this like flare ups and stuff like going on. In terms of something very, um, like gentle and subtle, uh, like chicken tenders, this works. Yeah, I go with this. Now, on the other hand, something that's kind of fatty, with like negima in this case, you want a little bit of that fire to clip up that chicken fat give it that smoky flavor because it's not the subtle taste of tender so for this one I'm not going to have too much expectations but it's going these are the the neck, shoulder yep, Negima is coming I'm working on it I might give it a little sort of kiss with the torch just, just to kind of add a little, little char, kind of render up that skin, crisp up that skin a bit. 
and then on the sides as well. Just mimicking what it'll be like if we're like on a charcoal grill and there's some fire that might happen. You're not cooking constantly on fire. It's like this sizzle of flame that kind of happens like this. And then there's another part of what the yakitori, like the, the, what the sake does, that's like a lot of sugars and moistures creating like a coating and then if I was able to, if I was to sort of heat that up, that adds like a layer of sweetness. Smoking, right? Yeah, it's definitely more of this sort of charred, you know, that barbecue grilled chicken smell. It's not, it's, it's missing that sort of the binchotan charcoal is smoky, but Oh good. Alright, let's dip it into the tare, back on the grill. If this was like the binchotan grill, as soon as this goes on, you really hear that sizzle. That's not really happening, so just once again kiss it with that. Actually, let's go with this one too. question on which electric grill I'm using. So this is Vuhek grill that I found on Amazon for $30. Right, dip again. What we're doing is caramelizing the tare, the sugars in the tare. We don't want to overly burn it. So I got a little, you know, bits of char. That's fine. But if this becomes all black, that's not good. The onions, though, they are always going to get charred. But uh, it's kind of like when you sort of char peppers on the grill or something. In this case, it's, you know, it's, it's not burned all the way through. It's just the skin of it. So that, that's actually, it, it comes out good right there, flavor-wise. So this is Negima. This is the neck skewer. Let's see, for the neck one, I'm just gonna go with some karashi mustard in the center. All right, still, still pretty hot. It's still steaming. I think you can see the steam, but I got ice cold beer. So let's go ahead and eat this negima. We've been live for, it looks like uh, almost 70 minutes. So I think after basically these two skewers, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it. Uh, but if you have any last sort of dying questions, send them this way right now. Um, as I eat this, I'm happy to answer them. Alright, here we go. Negima. I like the texture. Um. When it comes to the flavor though, it's definitely missing a little bit of that flame smoke kiss smoke. So maybe I, I could have torched it a little bit longer. And I'm probably a little spoiled because an hour ago I just had the same Nigima on the Bichotan grill for the video purpose. So I'm going really, but if I was just going into it completely uh, refresh new for the day and this was you know the only grow I'd access to this torch is a little bit more the texture is good it's just that a little bit deep smoky flavor that I'm missing here but definitely more of a yakitori sort of bite and flake bite and texture than you can ever do if I was to cook this on a pan or like try to cook this in an oven or something like that because we want to mimic how yakitori grills up. The negi is good, the onion. Okay, so after torching it, see the second bite.
Okay, much better. I think I just need to torture it a little bit more. Dip it into tare more or sake to give it that sake and with the torch. Because the sake and tare will absorb the flavors as well as it. It's just liquid and, and seeps into the meat. So, I think someone mentioned this might be $52 now. Uh, when I found that it was $30, I say if it's like up to maybe $50, $60, just like how the live work grew was, it should be like a no-brainer, kind of like if you get like an Instapot for home, like an air fryer at home, it's just like another appliance to just have around where you can grill yakitori, but um, if some of you guys know that I use like the live work grill, not just for yakitori, like grilling fish on it, uh, mochi, uh, or sometimes it's like reheating pizza or something on it. Like it's just a, it's just a grill that you can use indoors. Turn it on and off. You don't have to start a charcoal that takes like thirty minutes to get up to temperature, and it goes on and off. Uh, it, it's just for me, you know. I don't think you want to spend hundred hundred fifty dollars on an electric grill. Uh, you know, if you're starting out get yakitori, there's this option of like thirty to fifty dollars. I think it's a some you know it's it's a grill that does infrared heating so it gives you that practice of skewering and grilling and then everything you learn on this you can then apply to your charcoal grill now but it there's some grills out there that i believe are like 100 150 dollars maybe more i know it's packed with technology at that point i feel like you can just you know get that other like get your go go into like charcoal grill territory but if you can find a grill similar to this where it has the open coil layout for 30 to 50 dollars I re really recommend just, you know, buying one of these, get a whole chicken, have a sharp knife, break it down, make skewer, and get all your practices in. And then whatever you learn on this, when you apply it to the charcoal, and, and suddenly you get hit with like the charcoal flavors, when you know what you're doing in terms of cutting and grilling, it's, it becomes a plus. Uh, but if you don't know what you're doing, I think the charcoal can be away. So that's where the electric grill comes in, in the terms of this one that I bought, Buhek. Um, I think it does everything that a live art grill did, just minus some of the weird quirks of I can't uh, replace the water tray, but I can pour water on top. Uh, earlier today, if you guys were watching this whole time, it, it kind of turned off or broke, I guess in the beginning before I even started, but someone suggested banging it and it turned back on, so it could be a little bit finicky, but that's what this is. It's literally just an on and off switch that just lights up the coil, pretty simple. Um, yeah, if you can find something around this for $30 to $50, I say give it a try. But yeah, that was pretty much today's YouTube Instagram live. I just wanted to come on, show you guys breaking down chicken live, answer some questions. I know I couldn't answer most of the questions, but I tried answering where I can. If you have any other questions, write in the, the comments on this YouTube live. I'll try to get back to those, but thank you guys for watching. So this is my uh, neck and shoulder, got some beers. So if you guys are watching, thank you guys. Happy Wednesday. Come by. Alright. Bye guys. Bye YouTube.